All right, Duval, welcome into Duval Daily here. Obviously, I just got back in town yesterday just in time to catch the game. And what a game it was. Jaguars won 37 to 34. This morning, I want to talk about how Trevor Lawrence was able to dominate in that football game, how he was able to refine his foot and get going back in the right direction after what had been a few weeks of really poor play offensively for the passing game and Trevor Lawrence himself. So we're going to talk about that here today. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. We have got a little victory Monday sale going on over there. 37% off everything honoring the Jaguars victory. First victory of the season. Um, so yeah, 37% off everything with code victory Monday, all one word. Uh, grab this hat, grab the shirt I'm wearing. Whatever you want, check it out, ginjag.com slash shop. So, Trevor Lawrence dominated the Indianapolis Colts yesterday. You know, happy freaking birthday. 25th birthday to Trevor Lawrence. Went 28 of 34, 371 passing yards, two touchdowns. Did have the one interception, two rushing first downs. He had a big win for the Jaguars. And it was really a lot on him. But the way he was able to get back in rhythm, to get back playing Trevor Lawrence type football that you saw down the stretch in 2022 and into 2023 uh, early on he was really getting the ball out quickly and it wasn't always these easy button throws where it was a wide open guy underneath or a check down that was wide open some of them were tight window quick throws but I think these quick throws early on in the game were able to help get Trevor Lawrence in rhythm feeling confident in the game and you saw him to be able be able to play more methodical throughout this football game, right? Move the Jaguars down the field, march the Jaguars down the field, and also take some shots. When he did hold on to the ball a little bit longer, he was not skittish in the pocket. He was not indecisive. He worked through his reads well in this game, better than you've seen in a while. Um, he was accurate deep. He was very accurate in this game. I think he had like, I don't even know, maybe one missed throw from an accuracy perspective maybe the interception down the field and that was less about accuracy and more about probably shouldn't have thrown that football with Nick Cross kind of hanging out there underneath but he was so accurate in this football game and I think a lot of that comes down to uh, the mechanics were so much cleaner you know marrying the feet and the upper body what he's seeing when he's releasing the ball how he's releasing the ball where his feet are there wasn't a lot of hitches there wasn't a lot of unnecessary movement he wasn't bailing out of clean pockets he felt confident he felt comfortable back there and i think that's obviously huge um and i did want to remind y'all by the way we'll get the home setup studio going on later today or early tomorrow um just still super tired from this journey home from Alaska. So just uh, doing a little bit of a easier setup here for myself here today, but we will get that back going very soon for y'all. Really appreciate y'all support. So Trevor Lawrence, uh, I, d I do think as much as he was just taking what was there and also utilizing some tight window, quick throwing to get in rhythm. I do think there were more easy button throws in this game. I'd like to continue to see even more of that from the passing game from Doug Peterson and Press Taylor, but I thought they did a better job in this game of scheming receivers wide open at times and also using motion, utilizing motion. A lot of that was Trevor Lawrence talking to his guys at the line uh, about going in motion and, and signaling to them when to go. Um, but I thought that helped clear the picture up for Trevor Lawrence as well. Really only like, I don't know, one or two mistakes. You know, he did miss Gabe early, just didn't throw it his way on a pretty key second down, getting close to the red zone, getting into scoring position. Um, just was unable to see Gabe Davis, I guess who was in his line of his read. I'm not sure why. It looked like he just kind of locked on to Britton Strange there. But Gabe Davis was wide open down the field, so that's certainly um, something that they talked about after that drive, and Gabe Davis wasn't happy about it. Of course, Gabe Davis didn't help himself by uh, going and getting an offensive pass interference and then fumbling the ball when Trevor Lawrence had an absolute rifle shot to him. That was a beautiful throw as well. Um, but... You know, besides that play and the interception where Nick Cross 
uh, was able to get his hands on that football down the field, which that throw shouldn't have been made, but at least it was an aggressive throw down the field, trying to put points on the board, throwing it to Brian Thomas Jr. One of those situations that you learn from, but 34 throws and really only one bad pass and one missed read. I went back and watched the whole game, all 22 this morning. He was lights out. It was amazing to see what Trevor Lawrence was doing out there. The throw to Brian Thomas Jr., was it like 100% perfectly in stride? I don't quite think so, but it was damn close to it. Brian Thomas Jr. maybe slowed up like one step a little bit, um, but great throw. Great throw to Christian Kirk down the field too. He had three guys trailing him, so it had to be out there in front of him a little bit, and he put it there pretty perfectly. Uh, The touchdown pass to Brenton Strange might have been my favorite of the whole game. That throw, uh, it was – Brenton Strange had to go up for it, and it was a laser beam, but it was a great throw, and he put it where only his receiver could go get it. Um, And, again, I love that rifle to Gabe Davis. I love so many of the tight window quick throws as well. Quick game, tight window, uh, just getting the ball to your guys. And the guys – made plays there was no high leverage moment drops like in the past you've seen and I I don't want to blame any specific player but like on that throw down the field to Kirk maybe the guy who's there doesn't make the catch or the Britain Strange touchdown the guy who's there doesn't make the catch uh you've seen so many of those instances throughout Trevor Lawrence's young career and I thought that you just didn't see much of that today Were there some underneath ones? Obviously, yes. The Gabe Davis situation as well, where he fumbled and had the offensive pass interference. So the receivers weren't like 100% perfect. But again, there were no real high leverage moment issues from a drops perspective with the receivers, which is a big change from what you've seen over the years in Jacksonville. But this is honestly what I expect the Jaguars to do against the Colts, is we got a dog getting after it across the street a little bit. This is what I expect the Jaguars to do against the Colts. This is what they do. Uh, The the Colts defense, cover three, Gus Bradley, it struggles against the Jaguars. And part of that is Trevor Lawrence feeling good with it. Part of that is Doug Peterson and Press Taylor being able to dial it up against this defense, which is a fairly static defense. They do more than they used to, but it's still the most heavy cover three heavy defense in the league by a wide margin. And you just see guys able to get open. You see Trevor Lawrence feeling good about the leverage he's reading with his guys, which is why he's able to get it out there quickly in tight windows, um, just because he feels like he knows where the leverage is. Uh, So great performance, much needed performance. The Jaguars are now one and four. The question now is, can they do it again? Can this offense do it again? Can Trevor Lawrence do it again? Uh, The offensive line did its job in a big way, kept Trevor Lawrence extremely clean. And they did so for the most part against Houston as well. So that's an encouraging development the last couple weeks. Trevor Lawrence playing extremely well in this football game. The receivers doing their job. I thought there was more pre-snap motion, more easy buttons dialed up by the Jaguars coaching staff. So you're seeing a lot of good things kind of come together here in this football game. But again, it is against the Colts. It's against the team that they do this against consistently. Uh, The question now is, can you do it against the Bears? Can you do it against the Patriots? These are two must win games in London. The Jaguars desperately need to get to three and four after London. They need to take it one game at a time against the Bears next week, which is going to be a much more difficult defensive test, I think, uh, for the Jaguars offense than the Colts defense was. And then you got to do it against the Patriots, another very good defense. So it's going to really test them. Two must win games in London, offense playing well in this game. The defense We'll talk about the defense, too. That is a whole nother story. Obviously, Josh Hines Allen and Trayvon Walker playing good football, but you've got a lot of work to do on that side of the ball to be able to help your offense out a little bit more than you have the last couple weeks, last three weeks, really. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, again, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear like this shirt, Duval State of Mind, Duval hat. Really appreciate y'all. Have a good one.